Trench and excavation comes with its own unique set of hazards, none more common nor more dangerous than cavens. And as with any hazard, we always look for ways to eliminate it to protect those exposed. So how can we eliminate cavens? Sloping and benching. Hi, I'm Sergio with a Safety, and in this video, we will be explaining sloping and benching systems and how they can eliminate cave-in hazards when implemented correctly. Sloping is a method of protecting employees from cave-ins by excavating to form sides of an excavation that are inclined away from the excavations as to prevent cave-ins. If enough room is available, sloping and benching the trench walls will offer excellent protection without any additional equipment. Cutting the slope of the excavation back to its prescribed angle will allow the forces of cohesion, if present, and internal frictions to hold the soil together and keep it from flowing down to the face of the excavation. Now, this angle of the slope will be determined primarily by the soil type. Soil and site conditions will also play a key role in determining the angle. OSHA provides slope information based on the maximum allowable slope. To use the maximum allowable slope, Side conditions must be ideal. If any signs of distress are observed, the actual slope is required to be less than the maximum allowable slope. Hold up, so now we have two different types of slopes? An actual slope and a maximum allowable slope? Are you surprised? If it was easy to understand, we wouldn't be making this video explaining it, or at least trying to explain it, while also trying to understand it myself. As I was saying, if there are any signs of distress such as development of fissures on the face of the trench, appearances of stress cracks, or material slumping from the face, we must use the actual slope rather than the maximum allowable slope. So if any of these conditions are observed by the competent person and believes that it will jeopardize the integrity of the trench, the steepest slope which can be used as a maximum allowable slope plus an additional half horizontal to one vertical. For example, if we are working with type B soil and decide to slope the bench in order to eliminate cave -in hazards, we would follow the angle of one horizontal to one vertical as required by OSHA. That is your maximum allowable slope. However, if the competent person observes any signs of distress in the soil or trench area, such as stress cracks, then we would add half horizontal to one vertical to that angle, which gives us an angle and slope of one and one half horizontal to one vertical. And that's how we get our steepest actual slope. Now that's the difference between the two different slopes and the slope we will use depending on the type of soil and conditions observed by the competent person. Also, be sure to allow for a safety factor, which decreases the slope even more in situations where surcharge loads or vibration could weaken the slope walls as well. Now, let's talk about the prescribed sloping angles and bench dimensions and how they can be determined. We have four options to choose from. Option one, we assume type C soil, which may be considered a best practice in the industry. This gives a maximum allowable slope of 34 degrees or one and one half horizontal to one vertical. Something to consider is if choosing this option is that benching is not allowed in type C soil. However, it may save some time as soil testing is not required when assuming type C soil. Option two, use of tabulated data approved by a registered professional engineer. This data must include system selection parameters, data limits, and explanatory information. A copy of this data must also be at the job site during construction operation and soil testing is required. Option three, use of a slope benching configuration designed by a registered professional engineer. A copy of the design data is required to be at the job site during construction operation and soil testing is required if you choose this option. And option four, Use Appendix A, which is the soil testing requirements, and Appendix B, which contains the sloping and benching requirements and diagrams to follow. This option does require soil testing as well. So whether you choose to assume Type C soil for all your projects or contract a registered professional engineer to design your slope, you will be protecting your workforce from a devastating hazard. We hope this video has given you a better understanding of what sloping and benching systems are, how they differ from one another, and how they can protect our workforce from cave-ins by essentially eliminating the hazard altogether when done correctly. If you have any questions or need assistance with your safety program, feel free to contact us using the information provided below. And we would also love to hear from you guys in the comments. Do you work with trenching and excavations? Do you prefer to slope or bench your trenches? And lastly, follow us on all social media platforms to stay updated with our latest safety tips and tricks. And as always, until next time, be safe and thank you.